History and Systems students. Uh, I want to do a spotlight on Mary Cover Jones. This probably fits best um, under the system behaviorism. Uh, Mary Cover Jones was another one of John B. Watson's students. Um, you might remember that Rosalie Rayner um, conducted the Little Albert experiment with uh, Watson. Um, right around the same time, Mary Cover Jones um, also worked with Watson, and then she went on to do um, what's largely regarded to be pioneering research in behavior therapy. Um, many people would regard her as um, the founder of behavior therapy, <clears throat> at least as we know it. And uh, this dates back to um, the early 1920s. So you remember that uh, Watson and Rayner did the work with little Albert, where little Albert um, allegedly became fearful of a little white furry rat because of its association with um, loud noise, and that fear generalized to other fuzzy things for little Albert. So around the same time, um, Mary Cover Jones um, discovered a small child named Peter. And Peter was about three years old. And it turned out that Mary Cover Jones uh, was able to determine that Peter was already afraid of furry things, um, and in particular, of rabbits. Um, other fuzzy things, too, like uh, cotton balls. Um, but he was apparently particularly afraid and would get upset uh, when he saw a rabbit. Um, and Mary Cover Jones knew about Watson and Rayner's uh, work, knew uh, that Peter's uh, fear of rabbits was probably conditioned in a fairly similar way. As it turns out, if you if you study uh, Peter's home life, it's not hard to imagine that, that this could have happened. Uh, anyway, so when Mary Cover Jones started working with Peter, she would basically put him in his um, high chair, and she would show him a rabbit. Uh, she'd bring a rabbit into the room, and essentially, the short version of this is that uh, starting at about 12 feet away from Peter, Mary Cover Jones would uh, show this rabbit, and at first he would be pretty upset about it, and he would basically try to get away. And over the course of several weeks, uh, with varying degrees of success, but a sort of overall pattern of success, uh, she was able to reduce the fearful reactions that Peter exhibited. And she did this by uh, carefully and slowly uh, bringing the rabbit a little bit closer and a little bit closer to Peter. I'm simplifying what she did here, but that's essentially what she did. It's a form of what today we call exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is also known as extinction in classical conditioning. Exposure therapy involves uh, figuring out what stimuli events, situations, people, groups, locations, trigger anxiety responses for people, figuring out what triggers anxiety, and then carefully, uh, often using, it, using an anxiety hierarchy, to expose people to the things that make them feel anxious. This is done gradually and carefully, and it's done roughly analogously to what Mary Cover Jones did by doing brief, um, sort of distant or far away exposures of the rabbit to Peter, and then giving him uh, more and more exposure to the rabbit, and which essentially means the rabbit is present near where little, uh, where Peter was, and Peter could see the rabbit. And um, this would progress, this progressed with what Mary Cover Jones was doing until um, the rabbit could be right next to Peter, he could touch it, um, and um, he didn't exhibit any, any fear or upset uh, from having the rabbit close to him. 
And even though it's a very involved process for uh, people now who have anxiety disorders, this is essentially the way that anxiety is treated. It's, it's treated with exposure therapy. Um, yes, there may be other treatments for anxiety that people also may undergo, but um, the clinical research literature is very clear that um, if there's good success in the treatment of anxiety, that success involves exposure to the stimuli that provoked anxiety originally. It's extinction in classical conditioning. Um, the therapy uh, people experience may involve other um, interventions as well, but the exposure therapy is what tends to really help the most. That what's, uh, that's what is tended to be borne out in the research um, on the treatment of anxiety. So Mary Cover Jones um, is the pioneer of exposure therapy. Um, she went on to become a very successful developmental psychologist. She worked at UC Berkeley for many years. She was highly involved in a very long, a, lo a longitudinal developmental psychology uh, study out there. Um, and she was very highly regarded in her work there. So a little spotlight about Mary Cover Jones. You know, given uh, some of the things that we've been doing recently in History and Systems, um, last month and this month, it's worth pointing out that there are also a number of other behaviorists and behavior therapists who were women, and these include women who are around um, these days. I'll just call out some names here. Susan Meinecke, Michelle Kraske, Rosalie Rayner, Ruth Caldwell, Charlotte Bernardi, and a number of others. You might remember that there were a couple of, at least a couple of women who worked in Pavlov's lab. Um, uh, Richard Solomon is a very uh, well-known, very highly regarded uh, behaviorist. He's, um, he's retired, uh, but he worked at the University of Pennsylvania, and he had a number of pioneering and very influential um, graduate students who went on to highly successful careers in psychology, and uh, several of his students were, were women also. I'm focusing really on uh, those who had careers that seemed to be related in some way um, to behaviorism. And of course, don't forget um, Margaret Floyd Washburn, who um, did a lot of work with animal behavior and motivation. Thanks for watching.